Hey guys, it's Liz. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own donuts at home. Stop buying them from the grocery store. Trust me, they are so much better and so easy. It's coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. Hello, Sugar Geeks! We are in a slightly different environment today, as you may have noticed. I have moved into a brand new house and I have a brand new studio and we're going to be doing so many renovations over the next few weeks hopefully not months <laughs> and we're definitely gonna be doing some updates and bring you guys along for the ride but for now let's get to those donuts so the first thing we're gonna do is make our donut batter these are cake donuts fried <laughs> there's a whole bunch of different types of donuts you can make there's yeasted donuts there's um, donuts that use almost like a cake batter but you have to have a special donut machine um, so these are like the traditional donuts that i grew up making it's a really super simple recipe it's very forgiving you can make it with your kids so i'm using my stand mixer to mix this dough but when i was a kid i just used a hand mixer and if you don't have a hand mixer you could literally just use a whisk or even a spoon it's super easy so first thing butter and sugar into the bowl and we're going to cream it and that means we're going to go from this yellow sort of crumbly mixture to super light and fluffy and that's all of the air getting mixed into the butter and the sugar I'm not using my Bosch mixer because this is just like a super small recipe, so I have to scrape the bowl. <laughs> All right, so once it's nice and light and white and fluffy, we have established the aeration and we can move to the next step. All right, so now we're gonna start adding in our eggs. Make sure your eggs and your buttermilk are all room temp, otherwise it's gonna curdle the batter. It basically seizes the butter and separates the fat from the water content, and then you don't have fluffy donuts. All right, so now it kind of looks like pancake batter. That's the consistency we're going for. So at this point, if your eggs were cold, it would look like little chunks of butter inside eggs <laughs> so now i'm just going to quickly add the baking soda and the baking powder salt and the nutmeg into the flour i'm just going to kind of loosely mix this just so it's sort of all incorporated it's not super important you could literally just dump all of these ingredients into the egg mixture and it would be fine and i'm going to put my vanilla into the milk all right, so now we're just gonna throw the milk in here and then we're gonna put the flour in there and then we're gonna mix it until it's just kind of holding together. It, you, you don't wanna like over mix it. So the nutmeg is like the secret ingredient to pretty much all old fashioned cake donut recipes. It's just, whenever you eat a cake donut, you're like, what is that? that flavor and it's the nutmeg. So I've actually tested a ton of different donut recipes and I can definitely, definitely tell the difference between the ones that don't have nutmeg and the ones that do. If you don't wanna use nutmeg, you can also use cinnamon. It'll have a very similar flavor, but not quite the same. So what we have now is a very wet, sticky batter. It's okay. We're gonna put this onto a floured surface and then just give it a couple of turns like we're making biscuits just until it's workable. All right, nice and generous dusting. I'm just gonna put some flour in my hands. We're just gonna be gentle, gentle with the baby here. We're gonna give it a couple folds. I, I fold from the right and then I kind of just take all of these rough edges and fold them towards the center and then smush it down again. This is like grandma technique here. We don't need no rolling pins. Okay, that's, that looks good. So we got a nice kind of smooth dough here and I'm gonna press this down to about half an inch so we don't have super, super tall donuts. Like I said, you could use a rolling pin, but like we're going old fashioned here. Now, when you first put the, make this dough, it is very, very soft and hard to handle. So what we're gonna do is let it rest for five minutes and we're gonna heat up our oil. 
All right, so let's talk about the different types of oils you can use to fry donuts. Um, this is a dessert, so we're not necessarily concerned, at least in my case, about calories. I'm more concerned about how good it's gonna taste. So I started researching the different types of oils, and I don't know about you, but I've always fried stuff in Crisco. That's kind of like the traditional type of oil that I use. According to my research, there are three different types of oil that you could use. There's Crisco, there's lard, and then there's vegetable oil. Crisco is going to be kind of the middle of the road choice. It's vegetarian, so that's a good thing. It's not too expensive, and it has a very mild flavor. Downsides are it has a ton of kind of like chemicals and stabilizers and things in there that could affect your body if you're trying to you know, stay all natural. Uh, you could go with vegetable oil, which has very low saturated fat, but it kind of has like a weird flavor. At least for me, when I fry things in vegetable oil, you, you just kind of, you can kind of taste that vegetable oil flavor on there. But if you're really concerned about saturated fat or you have a heart problem, that might be super important to you. So you might want to go with the, the vegetable oil. And then on the other side of that, we have the lard, which in the old days, that's what everybody used to cook everything from pie crust to biscuits to frying food. And then marketing happened and they were like, no, lard is bad for you. It's, it's made of animal products and it's got a lot of saturated fat. You should use Crisco. But you know what's funny? Lard has less saturated fat in it than butter. It is important for your body to have a little bit of saturated fats. It's, it's good for your brain, it's good for your organs, but you don't wanna eat tons of it. I am in no way saying that lard is healthy for you, but it's okay to have a little bit. And you know what? We're making a treat, we're making donuts. I'm gonna go ahead and use the lard. It's gonna taste the best. It's going to make the outside of the donuts super crisp and it's not very expensive. So you might consider actually using lard. Just don't use anything like olive oil, which is the least amount of saturated fat of all the oils and super healthy, but it's gonna like probably burn and leave a really weird flavor in your baked good. So if you're trying to decide, shortening or lard is gonna be your best options for frying donuts. Okay, so I have made three batches of donuts in this Fry Daddy right here, which brings us to the point of what container should you be frying in. I used a Fry Daddy when I was growing up and I really like them because it's in its own container. It has a lid that you can cover it when you're not using it so you don't have to figure out where to even store your leftover oil. And it keeps the temperature at a consistent temperature. If you don't have a Fry Daddy, I am not surprised because I had to look everywhere for one of these things. Like, everywhere i ended up finding this at a random ace hardware store like i it was incredible i couldn't even find them online you can totally use just like a regular heavy duty stock pot you want to make sure that the the sides are nice and high and you never want to fill it more than halfway up so you don't get any sort of burns or spills and you have to really kind of have a, a thermometer and i know you're like ah oh, you know i don't have a kitchen thermometer well then you're going to have overcooked greasy donuts or raw donuts i mean just, just do yourself. You should have a kitchen thermometer anyways. Uh, this is a candy thermometer. I think I bought this at Target. So they're pretty easy to come by, but you know, you can also go to like a kitchen caboodle or get them off Amazon or something like that. And this is just gonna tell you, you know, what your temperatures are. And we are shooting for between 360 and 375. You start getting above 375, it's gonna start smoking and burning. And if it's too low, then the oil will seep into the donut before it has a chance to make that crispy outer layer. And it's just gonna get super heavy and oily. So you can see when we're making donuts, it's kind of a pain to try and just do this by visuals. So the thermometer is super helpful. If you wanna know even more about making homemade donuts, you can check out all of this information on my blog post on sugargeekshow.com. I'm gonna take my first block of lard, <laughs> put that in there. So whatever oil you're frying in, you just need four cups or two pounds. And then we're gonna to have to let this heat up for about 15 minutes or so until that all melts down and gets to the proper temperature. All right, I am using a uh, donut cutter, mm -hmm. but you can just use like a regular biscuit cutter with a smaller one for the center. You could use the, you know, like a cup and then like a piping tip for the middle. I mean, you can get really creative with this. I've even used a, like a can, like, you know, for like a can of beans, I've used that before. <laughs> this one works great. So that looks perfect. When, if you start trying to cut these right after you mix it, you'll notice that the dough is very, very sticky. So it is important to kind of let it 
hang out for a minute and it kind of gets the skin on the outside and it makes it easier to actually handle. When I was researching donuts, you know, it's like, what's up with the donut hole? Like, why do we, why, why not just like a whole, you know, donut? And I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly the inventor of the donut, he, he was frying the batter and it kept on getting a little bit raw in the center. So story goes, they used a cutter, cut out that very middle part so that the oil could get to the center, kind of like a bunt cake pan, so that you have a perfectly fried donut that's not too oily and not raw in the center. But they make donuts now that don't have the hole in the middle, so I don't know how that happens. <laughs> it's, it's definitely like a traditional thing where it's like, why does it have a hole in it? Well, my grandma put a hole in the donut and her grandma for her put a hole in those. We always put holes in the donuts. And you're like, okay, but why? We're like, don't ask questions. <laughs> All right, so then, you might be asking, what do we do with all of these extra dough? I just smush it back together, make a couple more. I wouldn't do that too many times because the dough is gonna start getting overworked. But like, would you throw this away? Ugh, no, definitely not. I'm using a four inch cutter and with this batch, that'll make about 10 to 12 donuts. But depending on the size of your cutter, you might get more or less. All right, so, Let's talk about toys. This is an infrared thermometer from Thermoworks. And if you don't have a candy thermometer or you just wanna have a fancy toy, <laughs> I love using this to check the temperature of oil. Point it right at there and it says 361. So we are good to go and I know that's hot enough and I didn't have to have like that thermometer thing sticking on the side or whatever. So I'll put the link to this down in the description of the video if you wanna check them out. Okay, now let's talk about putting the donuts in the hot oil. We're not gonna drop it in with our hand. That could spray up onto your hand. This is very, very hot oil. It could give you third degree burns. I don't wanna scare you, but it is important for you to know that it is extremely hot. So we're gonna put this on top of our either spatula or heat proof, whatever you have. All right, so we're just gonna lower this down like so. So when you first put the donut in there, it's gonna bubble up a ton and then it's gonna kinda of chill out and start slowing down and you wanna just cook it for two minutes on the first side and then flip it over and do another minute on the other side. You just don't wanna overdo it because that's when it starts to just kind of absorb oil. Look at how beautiful that is. So instead of putting our donuts on top of um, paper towels like I did when I was a kid, the best way to actually strain oil off of any fried foods is to put them onto a cooling rack, which is then on top of a pan. All of the oil drains away from the fried food and it's not sitting in its own oil, which just happens to be on top of a paper towel. So this is one of the donuts that I used with the leftover scraps and you can see it kind of tore apart. And that's just because I squished the dough back together it looks ugly, but it's gonna taste good. But just so you know, that's what happens. So I know you guys are gonna start asking me already, how do I make this a pumpkin donut? How do I make this an apple cider donut? Trust me, we are gonna be making all of the flavors of donuts based off of this d delicious cakey recipe. It's gonna be like the base recipe, kind of like my vanilla cake that I use for a bunch of other recipes. And I'll even explain how you can come with your own recipes using this. I would say that the uh, donut holes would fry in just about a minute. Not, they don't take very long. Just kind of pushing these down periodically so they evenly brown. Okay, let's get to glazing these donuts. Of course, there's a bunch of different toppings that you could put on donuts. Uh, you could do powdered sugar, you could do cinnamon sugar, you could do a chocolate glaze, which I'll have all of those recipes on the blog. But for the traditional donut, I really feel like a, a traditional glaze is, is the way to go, right? Powdered sugar, a little bit of milk or heavy cream. That's it, super, super simple. And it just adds like a little bit of sweetness because these donuts, believe it or not, are not super sweet. They're mostly just kind of rich tasting. So this is gonna add the perfect amount of sweetness. And if by chance your glaze is too thin, you can always add more sugar or you can make it thinner by adding more milk. Make sure to sift your powdered sugar, the lumps, yeah, they're in there. So you tell me in the comments, what kind of toppings do you like on your donuts? Are you a classic glaze or do you like frosting or chocolate? I wanna know. All right, glazing is the super simple part. Grasp the donut by the side area. <laughs> Straight down into the glaze. Boop, 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 boop. And then we lift up. Let that drain just a touch. 
and then back onto the rack. Now we could add sprinkles if you want. You can add color to this glaze if you want, but it's just beautiful all by itself. Okay, and then for the shiny chocolate glaze, we've got some chocolate chips. And to this, we're going to add our cream, our butter, and some corn syrup. And that just makes it extra shiny. If you don't have corn syrup, you can use glucose, or you could even use honey, although honey will leave a flavor. And I'm just gonna microwave this for 30 seconds. And then we're just gonna mix that up. If you need a little bit more time, like I feel like some of these chocolate chips are not quite melted, you can put it in for another 15 seconds. All right, that's nice and creamy and beautiful. Just like we did the glaze, straight up. <gasps> Is there anything more beautiful than the chocolate glaze? Like, honestly. All right, I'm gonna put some sprinkles on these babies. So cute. Avalon's gonna be so excited about these. I'm gonna do these guys with some cinnamon sugar. This is about a cup of sugar with two teaspoons of cinnamon. You can adjust that to your liking. Just a nice little sprinkling there. This is actually like one of my favorite ways to do the donuts if I was like in a hurry because it adds that little bit of sweetness that the glaze does but without like any work. And I don't know about you, but I always have cinnamon sugar on hand. <laughs> All right, and then for our little donut holes, we're just gonna do some simple powdered sugar. I do have a little soft spot in my heart for the powdered sugar ones. I must admit that I have already eaten many of these donuts. So I already know they're delicious, but I just, you know, for you guys, I'll just eat another one so you know that it's not poisonous. Hmm. I mean, there's a reason that this is a classic. It's so good. They're like a little bit crispy on the outside, but then after 24 hours, they do soften up a bit. And I think that's the difference between making them at home and eating them fresh as opposed to eating them from the grocery store because you would not believe how long those donuts are in those packages and sitting on the, those shelves. It's years, guys. It's years. Preservatives are a thing, theoretically. If you didn't eat these all in one sitting, they'd last like a couple days before they'd start to get stale. If you absolutely have to store them, put them in a Ziploc bag or a paper bag to just keep the moisture in there, keep them from drying out. Don't put them in the fridge. Dear God, don't do that. Mm -mm. Room temperature. All right, you guys. First recipe in the new kitchen down. Many, many more to come. Follow along if you want to see more. I'm Liz Merrick, and I will see you guys next week. Bye! Ah! Mm.